So in this video, we're going to take a look at the V-Ray lights. In the lights menu, we have V-Ray light ambient, which allows us to contribute a solid colored light to the scene. V-Ray light dome, which allows us to create a global illumination image-based lighting light. And, and the V-Ray light IES uses common IES files to describe our light fall off and intensities. The V-Ray light mesh allows us to turn any geometry into a light source. An animated geometry is especially neat to have. V-Ray light rect, which is the most common V-Ray lighting source. And the V-Ray light sphere, which is a point source. We'll start with the same scene we were using in the texture map quick start video. And we'll adjust the V-Ray camera to have the focal length we, so we can see more of the scene. Then we'll take a look at the V-Ray light dome a little bit more. So what we had in the last scene was that the V-Ray light dome was invisible and it was only the upper half of the, half of the hemisphere, which gave us a darker underneath. If we click on the dome spherical, we'll see that that fills in because now the dome is fully around this object. So we're getting image-based lighting data on the underside of the object as well. And what we can do is we can turn off the invisible check mark. And we can see now that the dome, the V-Ray light dome is both uh, above and below our object. We can then change the camera angle to see what the difference is. We'll change, change that so it's barely, so we, now we can see the horizon. Uh, and we'll uncheck the dome spherical, and now we can see that we only see the upper hemisphere of the dome. So we'll reset the camera back to our original position, and we'll disconnect the V-Ray light dome. So we're now back to black. We'll add a V-Ray light rect. This is the most common light in V-Ray. So we'll just create a scene for lights. Plug that into our stream and switch over to our 3D viewer. We'll pull that up so we can now see it. And it's still not really affecting it. So what we can do is we can change the scale or we can change the intensity. And because the scene is quite big, we'll change the scale first. So we can see it's starting to illuminate our scene and we'll rotate it so it's pointed down. And now we got a nice top light. You can see this is the start of a really cool studio lighting setup. We'll duplicate that and make another one. Connect that up. And since this viewer is trying to update while I'm trying to move this light, I'll just pause the viewer for a second and I'll grab the light and move it over to the right. This will be a little right light. And this one I don't want as an intense. And then we'll color it just slightly. And so I'm just playing with the color here until I find something I really like that's not so colored. And then we'll disable that and see how, what, how that's contributing. And just turn that off and on. If we want to have that a little bit more red, we can see that. We'll add a third light, which is the V-Ray light ambient. And this we'll just use for a little bit of fill. And that's way too much. So we can see what how that contributes. That's still a bit too flashed, so we'll go even further. Let's 
really not visible. Yeah, so this is just bringing up the darkest areas so that we don't have total blackness. If we we're using the V-Ray light dome, we could use that instead of the light ambient if we wanted to have some color in there. So we'll just switch that so we can see how that changes. And we're getting a lot of fill from the ground here. So, but we still have our rect lights. So I'll just disable those so we can see how those are contributing. So now we'll add the V-Ray light sphere, which is a point source. And I'll disable the other lights in our scene and connect the V-Ray light sphere in. I can move that over to the right. And I noticed that it's not really contributing yet. Again, this is a large scene, so we'll increase the scale. And now you can see how it's contributing and it's also visible. So we can also turn off the visibility with the invisible check mark and that is the v-ray light sphere and we'll take a look at the v-ray light IES we'll connect that in disable the light sphere pick a file we'll move that up change the scale now we can see which way it's pointing, which is the little circle. So we'll rotate that appropriately. Not that much. Negative 90. And now we can see how that's starting to contribute to this lighting. Um, we'll bump up the intensity to 30 and leave the other settings alone. Basically, IES lights are a descriptor of real world lights. So what we could do is swap this out for a different light set setup. And that description will change how it looks. And that's the V-Ray light IES. Now we'll check out what the V-Ray light mesh will do for us. I'll create a mesh, which in this case I'll make a cube. And I'll position that where I'd like it. And I'll scale that up, maybe a little bit more. And then for the V-Ray light mesh, what I'll do is I'll connect that into our light scene. I'll connect the mesh into the mesh input and the texture, just the uh, HDR for no particular reason, because that's what's in here. And we'll lead into the texture input. And now we can see that both the light is visible and the light is illuminating our object. We can then change that to be invisible, or we can leave it visible and we can ch change the intensity and drop it down to one. And this basically, now you can see the texture quite clearly and you can see the colors contributing quite clearly. If we go back to an intensity of 30 and drop the exposure down, you can see the same results as what we were just doing. Uh, but so we'll turn that invisible and leave it at that and that gives a nice shape we can move that cube around all we want the idea being if you had an animated object uh, you could then have that produce light for your scene now we can import an obj file and use that in the mesh light We'll animate the OBJ on the three axis so that it spins around and looks pretty cool. So in this video, we were able to see how all of these lights in the V-Ray light menu were able to contribute to this scene. V-Ray light ambient, V-Ray light dome, V-Ray light IES, V-Ray light mesh, V-Ray light rectangle, V-Ray Light Sphere.